XCOS is very powerful toolbox in Scilab. It's used for modeling and simulation of dynamical systems. In this video, we will learn how to create a graphical model for solving differential equations to solve the practical problems of engineering and science. The best part of XCOS is that we don't have to do the programming, simply drag and drop few blocks and study the behavior of the system. The basic strategy used in solving the differential equations in XCOS is that we have to rearrange the equation in this form. And then we feed dy by dx to the integrator block. So the output of the integrator block will be y. So we'll take a very simple example of Newton's law of cooling, the differential equation for which is given by this, the rate at which the temperature changes with time is given by this differential equation. Here k is the cooling constant and ta is the ambient temperature. T is the temperature at any time t. So let us see how this particular differential equation can be solved using x cos. In order to solve the differential equation, the first block which we have to select is the integrator block. And the integrator block is in the continuous time systems. If we click on the continuous time system, this integral block we have to drag and drop in the editor window. And the input of this integrator block will be dt by d small t, which is the differential equation we are solving. So let us drag this block, text block over here, and write down what is the input of this block. So this is the input of this block and the output after integration from this block will be nothing but it will be our temperature capital T. Now if we look at the right hand side of the differential equation we have to have this expression T minus TA times minus T. So let us see how we can get this expression using the blocks. We are getting T as the output of this block and we have to subtract the ambient temperature from so this can be done by using the sum block. So if I drag the sum block over here, the output of the integrator block will go as the input to the sum block. And then we have to subtract the ambient temperature. So we will pick the constant block over here and we'll connect the output of this to the sum block. Now, since we have to subtract the ambient temperature, so on double clicking this constant block, this dialog box opens up and here we have to give the value of the ambient temperature. So say if we give 10 as the ambient temperature and click on OK, so we see that the value of this block changes to 10. But now we have to subtract 10 from T, but here the sum block will add T plus 10. So in order to get T minus 10, what we can do is we can double click on this sum block and over here in the input ports signs or gain, we have to change from plus one to minus one and click OK. So the moment we do it, we see that the sum block has now positive sign and minus sign. It means that it will compute now T minus 10. So we have got T minus TA. Now we have to multiply it with minus K. In order to do that, we'll make use of another block. And this time we have to select the block from the mathematical operations library. So clicking on the mathematical operations library, we have to select this gain block. Drag this block over here in the editor window. We can select all blocks over here and we can drag it towards the left side. Now since we have to multiply the, this entire expression with minus k, so double clicking on this particular gain block, we can give the gain value. Gain value can be anything. It can be greater than one, less than one. It can be in decimals also. Since we have to give it as a minus k and say if we take the k value as 0.5, that means if I give the value minus 0.5 over here and click OK, we see that the value changes to minus 0.5. Now connect the output of the sum to this. Now if you look at the output of this block, it will be nothing but it will be t minus 10 times minus 0.5, which is minus k. So this is the right hand side of the differential equation which we are solving and this is equal to the d capital T by d. So the output of this has to be connected to the input of the integrator block because the input of the integrator block 
was nothing but it was dt by dt. So this is how the differential equation over here is represented in the blocks form using x cos. Now we have to display the final result that is the temperature. So for that we will go to the sinks library and from the sinks library we will pick the C scope. Now connect the C scope to the temperature and we need a clock for the C scope. So connect the clock to the C scope. Now only one thing is left that is the initial condition. We haven't given any initial condition so far. So in order to give the initial condition to the temperature, we have to click on the integrator block and on clicking the integrator block, it is asking for the initial state. So we have to give the initial temperature. So say if I give the initial temperature as 80 and click OK. So our design is ready and we can run the simulation. So let us run the simulation. Over here, we see that we are not getting the complete graph. So we have to change the scope parameters. So double click on scope and then change the y min and y max. So change y min to zero. Since we gave the initial temperature as 80, so I change the y max to say 100 and click OK. Let us run the simulation once again. Close the window and run it again. We see that it is showing us the variation of temperature with time. So we see that using x cos to solve the differential equation is super easy. No programming is needed. You have to simply drag and drop few blocks in the editor window, connect them together according to the differential equation which you are solving and run the simulation and you can study the behavior of any dynamical system.